Hey guys, so over the last little while, a lot of people have been asking me to debunk Hunter Avalon, and honestly, I don't care. <laughs> There's a lot of dumb things that he says ever since he became an SJW, but I just, I just haven't really cared, cause mainly because it's like, he, he'll say like one incorrect statement per video, so it would be more like a compilation as opposed to debunking a video, and I don't feel like editing that, so... <laughs> But he made this video yesterday and he makes a million mistakes here and he parrots straw man arguments, talking points by SJWs and Black Lives Matter supporters. So I figured let's do this again. I've debunked Black Lives Matter many times, but we're going to do it one more time here. And um, I've already made the points talking about how certain stats are in fact true, but it's the wrong way to look at it. And we'll get into it as we go through the video. So we're gonna start here. About three minutes in, he says this. It's not just being shot. So he talks about how Tucker Carlson mentioned that uh, black people are shot less, which is true, than white people. But um, Hunter says that it's not just about being shot, it's also about police brutality. And yes, black people do face more police brutality. That is an undeniable fact. So Hunter is right about that but not this. And also, even if we wanted to take Tucker's approach and say, you know what, fine, it's only 27 black people being shot in the year of 2019, that's still disproportionate when you factor in population size. So there we go. The population size stat again. The population size stat that is so far beyond debunked, it's almost laughable. Okay. I don't know why people always use this population stat. It is so objectively wrong. Okay, population stat is irrelevant because police only act, whether if it's brutality, shootings, or just making an arrest, if you are committing a crime that brings the cop to you. Therefore, population doesn't matter, okay? Population, just simply existing, would only be a relevant factor if everybody on the planet was being approached by a cop, but they're not only people committing crimes are approached by cops. Therefore, you don't look at the overall population. You look at the population of people who are criminals, not just people, okay? It's irrelevant. It's, it's completely irrelevant. This kind of uh, logical fallacy is done in SJW culture all the time. An example of it, that's off topic, but the example is still true, is how they talk about uh, the wage gap in feminism, for example. The wage gap, if you look at every study on the planet, they will always say that the wage gap is true because they're going by averages. But any economist will tell you that you don't use averages. But a person who just Googles a fucking question and takes the first answer they see will immediately see that averages answer. I call these people front page researchers for two reasons. Number one, they're the kind of people who will basically just Google something, and the very first article or answer they see, they take it as the gospel. And the second thing that these front page researchers do is that they take a stat at face value without, without researching why that stat exists or how it came to be. And, um, for example, Hunter Avalon would be someone who would see that, oh, you, you, if you incorporate the total population, they're, they're shot disproportionately. Okay, but how many of those people committed a crime? <laughs> and as, I, as my example with the wage gap, people who are front page researchers, as I call them, will see that, oh, the average is, is higher for men, therefore they make more money. But if you talk to an economist, you don't go by average. You go based on, you know, separate jobs. And when you, when you incorporate things like overtime pay, holidays, hours worked, job position, seniority, all these things, the wage gap disappears completely. But people like Hunter Avalon don't research like that because it's the proper way to research. So to put it simply, when it comes to people being approached by police, or in this case, shot, you do not go based on overall population because the overall population is not being approached and or shot. You go based on who is being approached. And black people have a three times higher chance of being approached. Why is that? Because they have a three times higher chance of committing a crime. <laughs> They make up only 13% of the total population, but commit over half, 50%. I, I believe the actual number is 56, 
percent of all crimes. It's no fucking wonder they're being approached more because they do more stuff that draws police to them. So starting now, he's going to be getting into the facts. So let's go. There's some data. Close to 42 per million people of African Americans were killed in police shootings between 2013 and 2019, the highest among all races. So once again, that may be a true stat, but the first thing you have to look at is the wording. Close to 42 per million. And since they make up only 13% of the population, you have to look at the ratios. Isn't it funny that they never, that when it comes to studies like this, they never show raw numbers. So yeah, when you're doing this per capita bullshit, of course you're gonna get higher rates because the percentage of total population is lower, so the ratio appears higher. But if you look at raw numbers, which is what you're supposed to do, it completely inverts and you find that white people are shot more. Moving on. Over 17% of African American victims were unarmed when they were killed, the highest among all races. And that sucks. Somebody should not be dying when they're fucking unarmed. But the point is, when you take into account the amount of crimes that are committed by black people over white people, the number actually ends up balancing out. Not to mention a 17% is not that high. It's higher than it should be, a lot higher, but it's not that high overall. People who are like, black people are the victims of everything, are acting as if that 17% is like 50% or more. Or 1.3 times more likely to be unarmed compared to white people when they- Compared to white people, yes. Because the total population of black people is lower, so it puts the percent as higher. I'm sorry, did you did, did people like Hunter Avalon and people who agree with him not learn what ratios are back in school? Ugh. They were killed. Listen to that. Black people are less likely to be armed, but still, they are disproportionately victims while they are unarmed. And because they have a three times higher chance of being stopped by police. And a very important fact, if you still don't understand what I'm saying, is this. Let's pretend that white people were the evil pieces of shit that SJWs like to say we are. And we're the ones committing 56% you know, of all crimes, we're committing most homicides, we're committing most theft, we're committing most drug crimes, we're committing most like street crimes, like you know, speeding and all that kind of shit. Let's just say that we're committing most of the crimes across the board, okay? And you're a cop. I want people who are watching this video to put yourself in the shoes of a cop, okay? And you are approaching somebody who is white. With the knowledge of the stats that white people commit more crimes, would you not, for your own safety, not to be a racist, but for your own safety, knowing that a white person has the higher chance of committing these crimes, would you not approach that person with caution? You would, okay? And, and I use white people as an example because I know I have a higher chance of saying, you have, you have a higher chance of saying, yes, you would. If I say black people, you go, no, no, black people are perfect, <laughs> defensive. The point is, it doesn't matter who the person is. It's factually black people, but, but regardless of who it is, if you know that this particular group of people has a high chance of doing something, you're going to you're going to be cautious of that thing that they might do. Does it feel a little bit generalized? Yes, it does. Does it feel judgmental? Yes. Should black people maybe feel like they're being judged? Yeah, you probably should. But don't blame the cops for it. I know it sucks to be judged that you're going to do something wrong just because you're black. But when the stats show 56% of all theft, of all crime, of all homicides, you're gonna, just for your own safety, not because you're racist, but just for safety precautions, you're going to approach with caution. That's just how it works. Because why should a cop be completely unprepared to avoid being racist, and then he happens to walk up to that one guy who shoots him? You have to be cautious. So now that we've clearly established that black people are more likely to be victimized by police. Because you're more likely to be approached by them. Let's act. And you're three times more likely to, to commit a crime. Here's an investigation of the Ferguson Police Department. In Ferguson, blacks were more than twice as likely as whites to be searched after traffic stops. E yes, because they were stopped more often. <laughs> it, this is not their skin color. It's just that, unfortunately, people with that skin complexion 
do most of those crimes. It's just cops being cautious. Even after controlling for related variables, though they proved to be 26% less likely to be in possession of illegal drugs or weapons. From yeah, I agree. So they, what you're saying is that they are being unfairly uh, judged, and you are absolutely right. But again, it's because of caution, not racism. Justicepolicy.org, black and white people admit to using and selling illicit drugs at similar rates, but yet blacks are vastly more likely to go to prison for a drug offense. That one is a lot more clear with the judgment, but again, let's consider the population. If they're doing it at the same rate, but blacks make up only 13% of the population, how much, how much is that in raw numbers? Let's think about it here. There's another study even indicating that in D.C., the data indicates the disproportionate stopping and searching of blacks in the D.C. area extended massively beyond any disproportionate rate of criminality. There's exact same reason. Low population rate, more crimes, despite that low population rate, therefore the ratio is much higher. Again, you go based on what the raw numbers are. You know, you have to go by a cop's personal experience because it's that cop who is personally taking the precautions. There's even data showing all kinds of racial bias in our criminal justice system as well. So for Kamala Harris to talk about there being some unconscious bias which can affect black people on a racial level, that is borne out pretty damn clearly by multiple different data points, multiple different studies, including a study done by the Department of Justice, for goodness sake. So in other words, what Kamala Harris said clipped down into the- And the unfortunate thing is, none of these studies, literally none of them, accommodate for the ratios because of how few black people there are in the country. And let's just use basic logic here. Let's imagine that the population of black people was not 13%. Let's imagine it's 50-50. Let's imagine that the population of the U.S. is 50% black and 50% white. Do you actually believe that those crime stats would be exactly the same? Do you really believe that? That's why they're flawed. Like three milliseconds may have sounded a little hyperbolic, but overall, it's true. Why wouldn't we want to look at this data and say, hey, maybe we should address something here. Maybe we should fix them. Because we shouldn't address something. We shouldn't fix something, at least not with the police. Here's what, here's what should actually be fixed. One, the few racist cops who have an authoritarian privilege, they should be fixed, fired, or retrained. And yes, there is a problem with that, but it's much lower than SJWs and Hunter Avalon think it is. Like, considerably lower. In fact, Funny, because Hunter Avalon is literally one of those people to say, The mainstream media says that 93% of Black Lives Matter protests are peaceful, therefore only 7% have been riots. And then in the same breath say, Less than 1%, yeah, it's less than 1% of police interactions that become violent, Yet they, but yet people like him would say, let's get police reform, over less than 1%. But yet we shouldn't criticize Black Lives Matter for 7%? Pfft. Oh wait, are you gonna tell me, Matt, it's about the raw numbers? Sure, the 7% is higher, but that's only because there's way less Black Lives Matter protests overall, making the ratio much higher. Ah, but if you use that point against me, you have to admit that my racial points are also true, or else you're a hypocrite! This study right here is perhaps the most telling. This is an enormous study of almost 100 million traffic stops conducted across the entire country, all right? The analysis finds the bar for searching black and Hispanic drivers' cars is significantly lower than the bar for white drivers. Additionally, black drivers are less likely to be pulled over after sunset when a veil of darkness masks one's race. So that's a really important one. It may actually seem as though they are literally targeting black people because he was saying that once they're masks due, due to the time of day where you cannot see into the car that it's a black person driving, all of a sudden they're being stopped by police less often. That's it, Matt. It's racism. It must be racism. Or they just simply know that the stats show more crime for those kinds of people in that time of day 
so they're stopping them more often as a precaution. I do agree it does look a little bit biased, but I don't think it actually is. Anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to say to him regarding uh, this particular video, and I just want to really get it through to people that the importance of ratios and these percents is so fucking important because you can't just immediately be like, black people are stopped more often. Racism! There's reasons. Reasons. Anyway, yeah. I don't think the stats he read are wrong. Keep in mind, the stats he read are correct. He's just doing zero thinking into the reason behind those numbers. See you later.